Hello everyone, what's up and welcome back. Today I'll be talking about SOAP and published web services. I'll cover how to publish one as well as how to consume one. Let's get started. To get started creating a web service, we can right click in the App Explorer and choose to add other. Then look for published web service. We need to enter a name for the service and then click on OK. After that, we need to add an operation to the service. An operation requires a name as well as a microflow to be attached to it. This will handle the transaction. The parameters and return type of the service will be automatically extracted from the microflow connected to the operation. Click on select to choose a microflow, browse for the desired flow, or click on new to create a new one for the operation. As an alternative to creating the web service manually, you can also start from a microflow which you want to expose. Click in the background of the microflow and choose to publish as a web service operation. This will automatically create the web service with your microflow connected to an operation. After creating all our desired operations, we can move on to the settings of the service. Here we can choose to validate against the WSDL, which by default is set to yes. Authentication is by default set to no authentication. If you want, you can change this to username and password or to define a custom authentication method. Finally, we can set a target namespace for the service and decide if association should be included in any generated XML. At the bottom, we have the options to export the WSDL file and XML schema. These will be useful to anyone trying to consume the service and we can save these files for later. You can also find these by navigating to the web service doc, which is automatically generated once you deploy your app locally. Simply replace the index.html part of your app URL with ws-doc to open the web service documentation page. Now that we've covered how to publish a SOAP service, we can move on to consuming one. To do this, simply right click in the App Explorer inside any application. Once again, look under Add Other and then look for Consumed Web Service. Next, enter a name for the service and click on OK. To finish setting up, we simply need to import the WSDL file, which we exported earlier. Under WSDL Source, click on Edit, change the source from URL to File. Click Select to browse for the file and then choose the WSDL we created. Studio Pro handles the rest and now we just have to call this in a microflow. In any microflow, add an action to call a web service operation. In the properties for the action, we can select the operation and set it to the one for our newly published service. Any parameters added in the microflow will appear here under body, and we can provide values to them by entering a value here or by using variables and entities. Likewise, we need to handle the response and normally we choose to store the output in a variable. Next, we can choose to generate an import mapping automatically for the response. It's important to remember only web service users are able to interact with the web service. Make sure that any accounts used to test the service are created as a web service user under the accounts page, otherwise they may not work. And with that, it's finally time to test the service and see if it works. That's everything you need to get started sharing data with SOAP and published web services. In the next video, I'll be shaking things up and moving on from integrations to Mendix Mobile, focusing on native mobile and progressive web apps. If you enjoyed the video, remember to like and subscribe to support the channel. Until next time, I'm Ryan Mocky and this is Hello Mendix.